Masking is one of those editing techniques. Some things are simple, some are hard. Well, you're in luck, because today you can test your masking skills by doing some awesome exercises. We're gonna go from easy to hard, but when you reach level 5, you will be a true masking master. Let's start with level 1. Sometimes you just want to remove items or people from your video, like this ball in the pool for example. To remove it, duplicate the clip by holding down Alt and dragging it one track up. With the top clip selected, head over to the effect controls, find opacity and click the pen tool to create a mask. Now in the program monitor, create a mask around the ball and its shadow. Make sure to leave a gap around the object, then move the mask to a spot where you can see only water. Now head back to the effect controls and click on the motion properties. In the program monitor, you can now cover up the ball by dragging your mask on top of it. Now go back to the mask properties and increase the feather a lot, but not too much, otherwise the ball will be visible again. There you go, just like it was never there. Ooh, you just leveled up to level 2, which is mask tracking. Take a look at these cars for example. The owners don't want their license plates exposed, so by using a mask we're gonna blur them away. First, duplicate your clip. Then with the video selected, go to the effect controls and go to the play it. Drag it to the first frame of the clip and find the opacity property. Click the pen tool to create a mask and head over to the program monitor. Then draw a mask around the first license plate. Now once that's done, we're gonna do some tracking. On the mask we created, click the wrench tool and make sure the preview is enabled, otherwise we can see the tracking. Then click the track mask forward button. Now let Premiere do its thing and when you see the mask falling off, simply click stop and adjust it. After correcting the mask, you can just continue tracking it. You can also track backwards with this button and with the other two, you can go forwards or backwards frame by frame. Now go back to the opacity property and click the pen tool again to create a second mask. Then in the program monitor, draw another one around the second license plate. Follow the exact same steps as you did for the first license plate and then do the same thing for the third one. Next, head over to the effect library and find find the Gaussian blur effect. Drag it on the clip with the masks on and go back to the effect controls. Increase the blurriness until the text isn't readable anymore. Now play around with the feather of the masks to blend the blur beautifully with the video. You can actually track any object, such as the headlights. I also animated the exposure property to make the lights flash. Awesome, right? And that brings you to level 3. Man, we're going fast today. Now level 3 has also something to do with tracking. This time we're gonna use a mask to stick text to an object, just like in After Effects. For that, we're gonna need an extension called Mask to Transform. I'll leave a link below so you can check it out. So this is a guy called Dave and we want his name to follow his head. To do that, select the video and head over to the effect controls. In the opacity property, click the pen tool. Now in the program monitor, create a mask around Dave's head. Once that's done, go back to the mask properties and click the track forward button. Oh no, we forgot the first part of the clip. To fix that, simply put the play head back at the first keyframe and click the track backwards button. All right, now go to the window menu on top and click extensions. Choose mask to transform and this is what you'll see once it's open. What this extension does is it takes your mask tracking data and turns it into transform data. To make that happen, right click the mask we created and click copy. Then make sure position is enabled and choose get from clipboard. Now in the timeline, select the graphic layer and then go back to the extension where you can choose paste as transform. Now you need to do one more thing and that is simply removing the mask from the video. That looks awesome. By the way, I actually found these clips by using the Storyblocks plugin for Premiere Pro and After Effects. Just type in whatever you need and bam, thousands of clips that you can download instantly. When it's done, they will appear right inside the project window. There's no need to leave Premiere anymore. Oh, and also, Storyblocks is sponsoring this video. You can literally find anything you need. Premiere Pro and After Effects templates that will save you so much time, stock clips of some beautiful nature, space and planets, sports videos, actually anything you can think of. Collections of videos that match together, organized so that you don't waste any time at all. Now, all of that in HD and 4K resolution. On other stock websites, you need to pay an expensive price per clip, but on Storyblocks, you will get everything for one set price. Oh, and you can choose to pay monthly or annually. Also, don't worry about copyright strikes or licensing issues, they will take care of that. I am also super proud of our very own landing page. You guys can actually download travel clips, car crashes, and lots of other videos that we shot specifically for you. Most of them are shot in a lock color profile, so you won't have any issues color grading the clips. Honestly, I have never made a your basic tutorial without using the Storyblocks plugin, so I truly recommend it to any creative. So take back creative control with Storyblocks unlimited royalty free stock library and tools today by going to storyblocks.com forward slash Premiere Basics. Or you can just click the link down below. And now it's time for level 4. We're gonna create this simple text animation. First select the text tool and go to the program monitor. You can type in whatever you want. Then with the selection tool simply adjust the scaling and the position to your liking. Oh and if you want to snap it to the middle, simply hold down control while dragging the text. Next select 
the video and hold down Alt. Then drag it on top of the text that duplicates it. Head over to the effect controls and click the pen tool. Then in the program monitor, draw a mask around the tower. But you only need to go precise around the right side. Then in the mask properties, click the track forward button. Once it's done, it will look like the text floats behind the tower. That looks cool already. Next, select the clip of the tower and hit Ctrl plus D. This will make the clip fade out. Do the same thing for the tower clip on top of the text. Now to make these lines appear, click the pen tool. In the program monitor, draw in a line like this. You can hold down Shift to make it perfectly horizontal. Then in the effect controls, disable the fill and enable the stroke. That way you can adjust the thickness easily. Now to animate the line, we're gonna use, you guessed it, a mask. In the effect controls, click the pen tool and create a super small mask in the middle of the line. Now we can't animate the mask path because we cannot ease the keyframes. So we're gonna use the mask expansion instead. Set a keyframe at the beginning of the clip and move the playhead further in time. Then increase the expansion again until the line is completely visible. Now to make the animation smooth, right click the first keyframe and choose ease out. Then go to the last keyframe and choose ease in. Last but not least, duplicate the graphic layer with the line and with that clip selected, go back to the effect controls. Then simply move the line up and that's all you need to do. That looks amazing. Uh oh here comes the final level. You're gonna learn how to blend multiple videos to go from something like this to this. Awesome, right? So here I found two clips and story blocks. One of some cows and one of some rocks. First, drag the rocks video on top of the cows. Then head over to the effect controls and click the motion properties. Go to the program monitor and try to match the horizon by adjusting the position properties of both clips. Next, make sure the rocks clip is selected and go back to the effect controls. Click the pen tool to create a mask and head over to the program monitor. Draw a mask around the trees and bushes to match the horizon. Also, don't forget to feather a little bit. Now it's time to match the colors. Go to the window menu on top and click on Lemetri color. With the cows selected, expand the curve cap. Scroll down to the hue vs hue curve. Here we can change an existing color. Select the greens by creating two points by simply clicking on the line. Then move the line in between these two points up and that will turn the greens more orange, just like the rocks. Then scroll a little up and in the hue vs saturation curve, click to make a selection of the orange colors. Then grab it in the middle again to increase the saturation saturation of these colors. Now, I also found a smoke clip on Storyblocks to make the blend work even better. Go back to Lumetri and push a little orange into the smoke. That looks awesome, but if you want to learn how to really match colors 100%, you need to use the Lumetri scopes. In the video on my left, you will learn how to copy any color grade from any movie like Asteroid City and paste them onto your own videos. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.